Uh, let me start with a just a general thing before I get down to the specific One Africa team. Let me start with a general thing. Synods. Okay, we have synods. What's a synod? We, we know it's a group of congregations who walk together. Uh, you know I'm a Greek teacher so I can't resist. Syn odos. It's with road. It's the guy who walks with you on the road. That's synod, synod. And we have several synods, right? We have the Malawi Synod. How many people are in the Malawi Synod? I'm not sure. Uh, the statistics are, are not finished. And some of those statistics are, are hard to understand. But if we count how many people are in church on a Sunday, in Malawi, we have reported about 19,000. That's our synod, Malawi synod. In Zambia, about 8,800 on a Sunday in church. We have a, another synod that is a sister synod to us. In English, we usually say sister synod, not brother synod. I don't know why. But a sister synod to us is Nigeria. Uh, there's actually two of them there. There's All Saints Lutheran Church of Nigeria and Christ the King Lutheran Church of Nigeria. And on a Sunday, there's about 9,000, 9,200 members coming together in that synod. There's the Lutheran Church of Cameroon, and they've reported about 600 members coming together. There's the Lutheran Church of Ethiopia, that new synod we're in fellowship with, and there's about 400 people in that synod. And there's Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, and on a Sunday, there's about 151,000 people gathering. So these are synods walking together, walking together with the same faith, right? And with the same purpose, well, then what is the One Africa team? Well, that's not a synod, is it? That's, that's a mission. That's a group that was sent by a synod. Sent by a synod to do something. So if they were sent by the synod to a new place where there were no Christians, well, then obviously the first job would be for those missionaries, those people sent to evangelize, to tell people about Jesus. And then the, the job of a missionary and a mission, well that changes according to who they're sent to. And so a mission is a group sent by a synod to work with others. And so one Africa team is that mission sent by Wells to Africa uh, to work with sister synods. I, I guess you could say we don't walk together in the same way like a synod is walking with a synod, Wells is walking with Malawi synod. Instead it's almost kind of closer, it's one Africa team, parts of it, working together with the sister synods. There's a great chapter in Ephesians chapter 4 uh, that talks about unity between Christians and I've often thought about it as a good instruction book for us between the different groups that the One Africa team works with and today I'm thinking about One Africa team in Malawi working with the Malawi Synod. It's too long to read the whole chapter. If we take the 692 words in the chapter and boil it down to 70, here are the 70 words. You pastors who are really familiar with the Word of God, I think you'll be remembering the whole chapter. Just listen to these words from Ephesians chapter 4. Unity, peace, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. To teach one grace, some to be apostles, 
to prepare God's people to grow up in Him, the whole body joined together. Are you remembering some of these words? And then in the middle of the chapter, as each part does its work, as each part does its work, and toward the end of the chapter, encouragement for our spiritual life, put on the new self, put off falsehood, in your anger, do not sin. So have emotions, but don't sin. <clears throat> Talk only what is helpful for building each other up. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Well, that's a great summary of the basis and foundation of our working together. We are in Christ working together. This isn't a business relationship. It's not for profit and this and that. We are brother Christians working together. At the same time, we're two groups. OAT is not Malawi Synod, and Malawi Synod is not OAT. There are two different groups of Christians, each one doing its part. Well, in what way? What is OAT's part? Um, I, I picture us being off to the side. I gave you a list of synods. They said there's LCC, Malawi, Zambia, Nigeria, Cameroon, Ethiopia, and maybe we could count Kenya now too. Well, they are the focus. They are the real thing, the churches. One Africa team is a mission sent to be off to the side of them. As what? Well, to help in some way with the kingdom of God, to be consultants, to uh, be available if a, a synod wants to call us in for something. In some ways, I think of it this, like in, in economies, they talk, about, uh, they talk about people who do production and then people who do service. So a farmer, he is producing. Or a company making cooking oil, they're producing. And they are creating profits and wealth. But now, these companies and these activities they need uh, sometimes other people to help, like the cooking oil company might need uh, what their trucks serviced or an electrician to come in. Those are called service industries. They don't exist without the production industries. And I think of us as the service and the synods as being the production. They are the focus. They are here, they will be here. We are an add-on and hopefully a help, hopefully a blessing. What is OAT's part? Well, some of that depends then on resources. And One Africa Team's resources are wells resources. So what, what are they? From wells as a synod, those 150,000 believers worshiping on a Sunday, from them, what do we get? Well, there's offerings, right? They're offering in baskets, just like we do, and most of that basket goes to their own church, and some of that basket goes to the synod, and then some of that money is used for missions. So that's one resource, and then from that synod comes manpower. All of us missionaries are from wells, so that manpower comes from wells. And then there's connections. Well, when you have two groups doing similar things, a church and a church, there's connections to be made, and, and people who can help people, or even spiritual connections. I can't quote the Chewa hymn we sang, 
Uh, but we say if you cannot uh, preach like Paul and so on, well, you can you can do what you can pray. What is it? I can't remember the two. Munga uh, pemperere. Well, we're believers. We believe God is really here, and He can do a lot more than we can, and we really value that. So we bring connections of prayers between church bodies too. That's our wells resources as the One Africa team. We have limits on those, limits of manpower. Maybe we don't have the perfect person to, to fill something that you or another sinner would like us to do. Maybe we can't have enough people. There's limits on funds. It's 151,000 people. Uh, that there's a limit how much they're going to offer. And there's limits on culture. Like our, our sending body would not approve of us doing certain things with their money. And if that's not approved, we, we just can't do it. There's, so there's limits. We can't do whatever we want as one Africa team. We are sent by the sinner. So what are things that that OAT does with those resources? You guys, you, you, you pastors, you all know, we, we subsidize synod, uh, synod runnings, meetings and things. We uh, fund special projects. Maybe it's a motorcycle or phones or buildings. There are times when we connect with wells and bring emergency relief. So with funds, those are some of the things that we do. We help with theological education quite a bit, uh, both undergraduate and graduate. So both the students who have not graduated and are not pastors, and with you pastors who have graduated, we help with, by providing uh, continuing education, grazie, and things like that. There's publications and media, and there's certain kinds of outreach, certain kinds of outreach that we help with. So, uh, mostly that would be, let's say, the LCCA in Malawi would want to go to cross the border in Mozambique. That sort of outreach we are able to help with. There are other things that we do. We do outreach ourselves. People come to Wells from Africa saying, Wells, we would like you to visit us. We want to know more. That's happened in Uganda, Rwanda, Liberia, and elsewhere. So we, as a mission of Wells, do that outreach work. And in that work, we're really begging and requesting of you expertise and we have used that uh, we have had national pastors travel with us to these outreach places uh, so outreach is something we do uh, we do promotions back to the wells so wells sends us and they expect us to report and inspire and tell them what we've been doing in the kingdom of God so we do that, um, and we have operations. Uh, Mr. Felgenauer is, is heading our operations right now, so that would include things that we need to take care of, administering ourselves, and any administration things that are, are connections between synods. So let's say uh, you request some sort of funds or a program, then, uh, well, we have to take care of that, and we have to figure out the money and move it and, and so on. So that's a part of operations, too. One Africa team, we are here to offer, uh, on behalf of our city, to offer experienced and durable connection with Wells on a synod to synod basis. And I think you can have confidence in that. On the one hand, we're not individual donors who can do whatever we want. But on the other hand, we are 
an officially appointed arm of Wells. And so I think we're a little bit more consistent and predictable that way. Here's a big question now. How can a sister synod, like the Malawi Synod, connect with another sister synod, like Wells, and uh, the Wells Mission One Africa team? How, how do you connect? Really not much has changed. Any question between, between the synods, between the Malawi Synod and the Wells, can go to the field coordinator. Now, as you get connected with the resources and what we could help with, well now, if you get to know someone in One Africa team, well, you don't have to go to Holtz every time. So Pastor Nkoisenga was on publications. He got to know Pastor Revke, who is dealing with publications. There's no need to add more uh, communication. It's not hiding anything. It's just people knowing each other better and getting connected. And they talk to each other and they get things done. So we want to connect with you more closely. We, we are trying to get decision making and connections close to where people know things about the issue. And we're trying to be open and give you opportunities con to connect. So, who is in OAT that you could connect with? On this accountability chart, at the very top, you see three boxes, left to right. That's the Administrative Committee for Africa. On the far left, we have what we call a visionary, and that he just takes care of our oat vision, how we think we will be doing things in the future, who we think we are, our big, big plans. So this person is Mr. Hansen. He's on the Administrative Committee for Africa. And he is accountable for keeping OAT on track with its big plans and vision. The next one over, authority and personnel. The person in charge of that is Pastor Bibbins, the chairman of the ACA. Our health and well-being, uh, if there's problems or discipline, if there's calling, he is the official person in charge of that. And then we have a teacher on the right, and it says USA Promotions. He's the third member of the ACA. He's, his name is uh, Heineke, and he helps with promotions from the USA side. Okay, then going down from there, you, in the middle you have the big box, and it says integration. So that means what? It's like this. It's the different pieces fitting together. It's integrating things and making sure they go along and run well. And that's an actual title that we have, the OAT Integrator. And I hold that position. And I am accountable for all of the One Africa team's plans. Uh, I'm accountable for integrating between the different functions of One Africa team. Those functions are the, box, the rest of the boxes on this sheet. I chair the meetings, I handle special projects that don't fit in nicely into our other functions, and I coordinate work with sister synods through the field coordinators. Well, let's start with that function first. Look to the right, and it says liaising with sister synods. That means connecting, communicating, working with sister synods. So that, that, what is that? That's work inside of established fields. That's Malawi, Zambia, Nigeria, Cameroon. And uh, these coordinators are accountable for our One Africa work or support of work with those five established synods. And the field coordinators are primarily accountable for that. If they have an issue that crosses across the different fields, 
Then they'll call me and we'll have a meeting together and I'll chair the meeting. That's mostly what I do with that. On the bottom left, you have operations. So that's administration of OAT. And our LMA, that's the title we call them, the, the leader in charge of that and accountable for that is Mr. Felgenhauer. In Malawi, he was our business manager. He helped us here in Malawi. Now, he's taking care of a much bigger job. It's operations for all of our missions in Africa. That's financial accounting, budgets, property management, insurance, all these things listed there. Humanitarian work, OAT co cooperation with some outside entities, or, or not, not always outside, but very close, like Committee on Relief, or Kingdom Workers, or Central Africa Medical Mission. Management of financial requests from sister synods, that's also in there. Okay, next box to the right, what does that say? Theological education. This is theological education in established sister synods. And our leader of that is Pastor Bear. He's a member of the PSI and a professor at the seminary, Mequon. So he is accountable for our plans. He's now a part of us, too. Our plans in regard to how it is, uh, how we might help with theological education in sister synods. And then I have a note down below there. Pastor Panny was doing this work for us, but now he's doing more at the LBI, and he's doing a lot more administration and helping to relieve me so I can do more with my integrator work. And now we brought in this PSI member, Pastor Bear, to help us with the theological education work. And that gives us some more connection and strategic planning with the Mequon Seminary. So that's been an advantage too. The next one over is communication. And the one accountable for that is right here, Pastor Repke. And what does that include? It's both publications and promotions. He's accountable for OAT plans for work with sister synods in area of publications and media and accountable for OAT plans for informing wells regarding ministry and promoting support of ministry, including support of sister synods requests. And finally on the right we have outreach and that is led uh, by Pastor Hartman in Zambia. He is accountable for work outside of established fields. So this is not going to be Malawi, Zambia, Nigeria, Cameroon. This is going to be new places, Liberia, or maybe Kenya, or Uganda, Rwanda, and places like that. So we hold him accountable for our work and supportive work with groups outside of the five established sister synods. I just have one, one more minute of comments. We used to have, if you counted uh, medical mission, we had 13 missionaries in Malawi. And we were taking care of half, visiting half of the Malawi congregations at the time. Um, now we're four, and in Zambia there's four, and in Cameroon one, and that's it. We needed to respond to this change uh, of what we have. We have fewer people, and we have resources we want to use across the continent, and so the BWM came to us and said, we want you to reorganize. You were organized by field, not anymore. We now want you to organize all together. We didn't have a choice with that, and some of us were not happy with that at first, but we have seen blessings from it. Uh, this meeting would not have taken place without this One Africa team restructuring it. Uh, I don't think we would now have Pastor Daile this quickly 
at the LBI without the quick approval we got from the one after team. I know it was through discussions in the One Africa team that Pastor Kamwata was asked to take over the biblical languages. We have visited Liberia several times and we are visiting other new places all around uh, Africa. We used to not know what to do with that. Well, what, should a Malawi missionary go or should a Zambia? It's not our responsibility. Now we know what to do with things. So this has been a blessing in my opinion and I hope it will be a blessing to the Malawi Synod too.